Okay, hi everyone, number one Marmaduke fan here. Uh, I did it again. I, uh, my little niece asked me about ponies. I explained the concept of My Little Pony to her and showed her a picture of them, and now she's mentally attached to them. I, uh, my my sister's gonna disown me. I introduced my ne my nephew to Ninja Turtles. I introduced my niece to My Little Pony. What have I done? So uh, I got her the first IDW book. It was a hit. I'm not going to give her these right away because it's probably going to take like a year to read through that first thick book I got her. But for a future birthday, I got her uh, the My Little Pony, the manga, because I, I had to. I, I couldn't resist. What could My Little Pony, the manga, be about? And it was not what I was expecting. So uh, I'm going to give this a spoiler-free review, and then I'm going to do probably like a semi-spoiler a review. The spoiler-free review is if you like uh, the... Silly Slice of Life episodes of My Little Pony, you will get a kick out of this. If if you were around between 2009 and 2012 when ponies were all over 4chan, you have to get this. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, which, which actually kind of like made me think for a while because it's referencing referencing a lot of, you know, like fan gags about the series. So what, I was enjoying it, but I kind of thought, well, wait a second, is my niece going to enjoy this if she doesn't know, for example, who Derpy Hooves is and what all the lore about Derpy Hooves is from uh, My Little Pony fan boards, right? And, and I actually think that uh, David Lumsden did a good job uh, kind of like using get memes from the fran from the fandom uh, without making it just self self referential. So it's not oh, it's funny because it's a meme. Ha ha ha! Derpy Hooves likes muffins, right? He'll he'll actually kind of like use the idea that the character Derpy Hooves like muffins to do something fun, uh, or he might reference a a silly you know fan character from the background but then he'll actually integrate it into his story pretty well so i think that a kid who doesn't know the meme side of things will still get a kick a kick out of it that was just something i was kind of like puzzling about as i read so uh volume one was just so it's written in a four coma style and i guess one of the interesting things is is this even a manga uh it, maybe we could let the uh phds argue that the manga purists might might not like it so uh david lumsden Sounds pretty American, sounds pretty Western to me. Uh, Shie, I tried to look her up and I can't find anything about her. I, I found like Reddit forums li linking to dead links that were supposed to be her portfolio. My guess is it's probably a female mangaka who runs a studio uh, because Seven Seas Entertainment has done uh, content similar to that before. I think these are the guys who make uh, manga adaptations of classics of Western literature and they uh, localize uh, Japanese illustrated editions of things like the, the Chronicles of Narnia books and uh, the George MacDonald books illustrated by Japanese artists, I think, were put out by Seven Seas. So for me, that's like, that's a, that as long as you have kind of like Japanese talent on it who are in the manga industry, that's enough for me to call it a manga, even if, you know, it's, it's formatted left to right, right? Who cares? I'm not going to, I'm not going to have that silly debate about how purely something has to be for it to be counted as manga. So it's a four coma style and, uh, the, the writer has some fun. Uh, th there's one notable chapter where the writer really has fun with the manga idea that I thought was pretty clever. So discord who has the power to alter reality, uh, and is, and is aware that he's a fictional character. He realizes they're in a manga. So he snaps his finger and he puts all of the ponies into a silly manga world and uh I, I i i was just cracking up the whole time i was reading this but i was also trying to think is this smart writing is it just oh haha uh naruto ninjas I, I thought he did a pretty smart idea of using a parroting manga in a way that's actually funny beyond just saying haha manga characters have big eyes so he actually told the story he referenced not just naruto but several different uh, genres of Japanese manga in a way that shows me that he actually like watches the material and kind of knows the uh, vi vibe of some of these things. And then it's just some cl clever gags that work on their own, even if you don't know the shows being referenced. So that's one of the most uh, consistent things I noticed. It works on its own. Uh, and the, knowing the references and getting uh, what's being parodied might help a little bit, but you don't need it. It'll it's it, it's funny because of the slapstick, or it's funny because of the irony without without having to rely on just the reference. So, uh, book one is just sort of like a collection of minisodes, uh, and then book two is the weirdest thing I've ever read. So I think we're going to get out of spoiler territory and into this is where I'm going to talk about light spoilers. So. 
Book one is you can tell I could kind of tell he does one mini story with each of the main six cast. They even advertise it. You know, you've got to appeal to kids who have one favorite pony. Book two shifts gears and it becomes an entire story centric on Pinkie Pie herself. And I kid you not, this is the funniest and probably one of the smartest time travel al reality altering stories I've ever read. It's Groundhog's Day, but with Pinkie Pie. So uh, Groundhog's Day and uh, Edge of Tomorrow. So Edge of Tomorrow is the premise of you repeat the day over and over again. Edge of Tomorrow does it as an action adventure sci-fi story. Groundhog's Day is a pretty funny movie. It's a funny and a sad movie. It's almost like it's a commentary on life. This is just the funniest thing I've ever seen with a Groundhog's Day uh, set up. So Pinkie Pie uh, finds herself living a day over and over again, and it's the day before the big festival. So she's, she's less worried about the fact that she's living the same day over and over again is the fact that this means that she, the, the big party's never going to arrive. So, uh, this was genius. Uh, what was genius about this is, this is the perfect character for this, this scenario. So when Pinkie Pie isn't very well written, she's just a character who's totally random and just says silly things that don't make any sense. When P Pinkie Pie is well written, uh, she she works in a couple different ways. She can do sort of Bugs Bunny cartoon, uh, Hanna Barbera physics antics. Uh, she's sort of the sweet person. Uh, who's goofy in the midst of a serious situation. So she adds levity, and it, it's sort of like it's fun that although she's got this very kind of like lighthearted personality, she's actually in a dangerous scenario, and she really does want to solve the problem. It's just she never gives up that chip chipper side of her. And because she's kind of weird, she's creative. She comes up with what sounds like a stupid idea until you actually think about it and think, hey, wait a minute, that, that sounds stupid, but – uh, that might actually work, come to come to think of it. So I thought this was a very good example of Pinkie Pie being written as uh, someone who can achieve that kind of comedy. She, the absurd person in the midst of uh, this bad scenario. So she starts reliving her day over and over again. At first, she thinks that everyone's playing a prank on her. Uh, and doesn't even realize she's living the same day over and over again because she's kind of blind, right? She's an adorable blind. And then once she figures it out, then, of course, it's the antics of her trying to figure out what to do about this, this situation. And it just gets weirder and weirder and more complicated from there. But everything's very carefully uh, niche together. I'm sure David Lumsden was very proud of how he pulled off all the time travel stuff. And then I noticed he even foreshadowed some of it in book one. So very funny, a funny book. If it makes you laugh, I will recommend it. I'm not going to do the play by play of everything that happens. It's uh, the physical comedy is on point. The, ir the ironic situations are on point. Uh, the characters are Fitting with, he, he clearly really loves this franchise and even knows like the fan, the goofy fan theories about it, about the background characters. So, uh, highest recommendation for if you're a pony nerd, you're going to absolutely love it. Presumably, I don't know. It seems like the fandoms died down a little bit from the heyday, but uh, for me, it was kind of a flashback to 2009 to 2012, and it avoids the trap of becoming overly self-referential and just having fun with the characters and putting them in these uh, in these amusing and hilarious situations. So check it out. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Okay, I can't believe I forgot to mention this. So, P.S. There. <laughs> There is a panel where the My Little Pony cast form a Voltron robot by combining together to fight a Spike Godzilla. This is a real panel that exists in a real comic. <laughs>